everybody. This is Kevin again with the fourth panel discussion here at the... Uh... <laughs> Come on, let's do that very quick. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. This is all live, you know, you see. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. That made a sound. Uh, special thanks to Brauerei Strate for supporting us anyway. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, so <laughs> let me do a clean one, please. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm laughing my ass off. So, uh, thank you again for joining us online and on, uh, on the, uh, in, in the audience and uh, down the hall. Uh, I am again your wonderful Kevin here at the fourth and unfortunately last panel discussion of the 17th installment of the Short Film Festival in beautiful Detmold. And without further ado, I would like to um, let, uh, get you introduced to our brilliant uh, directors over there and tell us a little bit about yourself and we probably should start from right to left and then next one the next question is uh, uh, left to right so yeah. I start. okay my name is Eva Jan and the film um, which was screened yesterday at 10 p.m. Which um, had the title "Another's View of the Universe." I am um, a filmmaker for quite some time, but took also a long break and went back at it kind of three, four, or four years ago, and decided to stick with very short films. And uh, since this epidemic started I was prepared because I shortly before had started with this concept to uh, stay at home and do it from there so a lot of it is uh, archival material and uh, from me but also from uh, other free materials out there and I create from that and before I all started many, many years ago, I was a student at the Film and Television Academy in Berlin and uh, made documentary films and uh, 60 millimeter. So the whole video thing is something I started about three years ago. And I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Iso. Uh, my film here is called That's It, and I'm actually not the director. I wrote it and I acted in it, but um, anything other than that, I worked with an amazing person who couldn't be here today. Um, and that was my sh first short film that I ever wrote and that I la acted throughout the whole thing. So it was a good experience for me, and now I'm excited to do more because I loved it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jimmy Konamina, and I'm here for my short film called Lou. I'm the actor and director. It's my third short film as an actor and director, and I'm really to be glad to be here and to be shared this table with uh, those great directors. So, glad to be here. Hello, guys. My name is Nora Chenwe Agassi. I am the director of Alkevulan Viva Africa. And um, that was also my first film as well. And um, I'm also happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Nathan Chedia. I'm a filmmaker from Australia, but currently live in Berlin. Uh, I have two films in the festival, uh, Chicken Boxer and Iceberg Licking Society. Um, I directed and shot the films and also edited. The only skills I can't do usually in filmmaking is the sound, which is my friend Hali, who's here, and uh, color grading, which uh, yeah, is very important in filmmaking, I think. 
Um, what do you think? Is there a difference between you being a, a film creator and being a film consumer? Do you have like certain uh, things that you always look through the eyes of a creator, or is there a difference between you consuming films and creating films? Nathan. Oh, sorry. I was, I was, I was consuming that question. Um, yeah. Uh, f for me, uh, like everything around me in inspires me to want to make films. So whether it is watching film or like watching my friends or experience TV shows or anything like that, I'm always inspired by something. And then uh, it's not necessarily that'll be in my film, but it'll come to me later on. So um, yeah, like uh, I don't know, I'm always looking at things, like working out how I can use them in a certain way. And I think, uh, yeah, film is a a big one of those, but I think it happens in everyday life everywhere. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, basically I create what I want to see. And so, for example, like my films include a lot of color. And so like, you know, like I create most of that, like things that are drenched in a lot of color and vibrance and yeah, pretty much. Um, yes, I think it's really important and different because if everyone had to make the, the same movie, it would be different versions because everybody put his soul in it and uh, it's own vision. So, so yes, it's really interesting to see how um, a same story can be telling by different ways by different people. So yeah. Um, for me, um, I consider them two very different experiences because I don't believe I have the uh, like graphic eye, the visual side of it. But what I do create, I think of it as a, I do it to relieve myself of some of the things that I think about, so some of the things that I want to express. So that's, um, of course, I get inspired by the stuff that I see, but when I'm watching a film and when I'm trying to create something, the process is more me, my brain, my experiences rather than um, what I see and get inspired. Mm -hmm. um, I think I watch films for what they are or for what they try to be and uh, try to stick with my own thing. I mean, it's there and it once it comes out and I think I'm pretty through with inspiration through other pe people's films, but I do appreciate when I have a chance to see them like here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's basically it. I get inspired through, presently I get inspired through completely different things could be a piece of music or it could be a poem or it could be an image that I saw somewhere and uh, I go from there. Mm -hmm. I hope you all have a great time here in uh, Detmold. Uh, if I may ask what made you consider to uh, first of all apply and secondly to walk the extra mile and actually come in here to uh, our tiny little venue and our event. I was ready to leave my house, really. <laughs> and this is my first trip since two and a half years. And I noticed how weak my muscles are in the meantime. I really have to do, I mean, I had to get out. And that's what I thought Detmold could be. I've never been here. I grew up in North Rhine-Westphalia, but I've never been to Detmold. And uh, I am very glad I made it so far. And I enjoy it. Thanks. This is my first time in Germany and I was so ready to leave as well. Uh, but I'm actually here on Get Your Own Picture. The, um, we're also creating crews, trying to shoot stuff. And I'm learning a lot of stuff. I'm meeting a lot of new people. So the thing is that them being together in the same period was really amazing for me because I got to see amazing people and I got to see amazing works as well. So I would do it any day. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Um, it's, sorry, it's really uh, interesting to meet other directors, other artists, actors, and different kind of jobs in the artist's way. 
and uh, and for me too it was it was the first time in Germany so uh, I took time to to visit the, the city a little bit and uh, it's a really nice city and a really nice country so thank you to, thank you to in inviting me um, so what made me apply was basically like my film is in relation with the Berlin conference that happened in the 1800s and so um, you know since there's that connection to Germany it, I was like you know why not and after I got selected, I was just looking for a way to leave America and just needed an excuse to come here. <laughs> and so, yeah. And I'm glad I did because I've, you know, met a lot of people and learned a lot. And it's a great culture and there's a lot of great artists here as well. Uh, for me, I, I didn't actually know I applied for this festival. I, I go online and apply for every free festival there is. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> When I got the email, I was like, oh, then I found out about the festival. And I'm really glad I was given the opportunity to come here and um, be part of um, Get Your Own Picture and meet all these fantastic new people. And uh, yeah, I think film festivals are great because you meet people that love film as well, but you also get to meet new friends and create connections that'll last beyond the film festival. Friends for life. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are there specific sources uh, for um, inspiring uh, uh, film creators that every film creator should know and um, pull inspiration from? Oh, sorry, I was not listening. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, are there specific sources that every filmmaker should know about uh, where to find inspiration for their work from? Uh, well, I think like the, the best source of inspiration is uh, you actually just sitting down with your thoughts and like uh, listening to them and listening like uh, from a, maybe an outsider's perspective. And um, also the internet's great, of course. But um, I think uh, just uh, like for me, people inspire me. So like that's, that's where I get my inspiration. Um, for me, I, I agree with what he says about like, you know, just listening to your thoughts, um, because at the end of the day, only you can create, um, you know, like what's in your mind. And then also for in terms of like directors, is, is that what you meant? Like generally not only directors, but also, uh, actors that can, okay. uh, every, everyone can, uh, um, uh, uh, for me, I think uh, Wes Anderson is like a big, like a huge inspiration of mine. Um, Wes Anderson and Kira Kurosawa as well. And um, also like just to bounce off what she said, you can also get inspired by anything at all. Like for me, I get inspired by something as little as hearing a conversation. You know, if I'm walking past two people and they're having a conversation, I can get inspired by that and create something from that. Um, and so, yeah, like inspiration can come from anywhere. Yeah, I think it can be really personal. And uh, for me, I think the music inspires me a lot to, or maybe help me a lot to listen to my thoughts. And, uh, and yes, it can be, um, like you said, it can be every, everything. Uh, Sometimes like the little moments in the morning or uh, a sound you hear, a feeling, it's uh, it's it's really um, complicated, and I think for me, it's uh, music inspiring me a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was talking about listening and how it's like the greatest gift yesterday. So I would just say that listening to yourself and also watching and hearing what's going on around you and paying attention to actually. St stuff that are beyond your control and just be present by hearing them um, is really inspirational. For me. Yeah, I said it already. I mean, the, the, there is one other source for inspiration for me when I backtrack it a little bit, and that was uh, during the lockdown times. I was l looking a little bit what calls are out there for films. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I attended to two, three, or four of those suggestions. And uh, this here is one of them. Mm -hmm. This is another view of the universe. But it started for music. It was a music competition mm -hmm. in Romania 
for music for a planetarium or observatorium. Mm -hmm. And I had this music and I thought, okay, let me go after space images for it. And I've sent it out to them. And of course it was uh, not taken because this band is a little weird to their ears, I'm sure, but they're good for me. And um, so I kept on going and added some texts about uh, or looked and read and have read before and searched for it again about what artists and writers are thinking about um, the universe. Mm -hmm. And so that was what this film was. Thank you. Uh, we have some more time for the audience and Jacob was I raising. To, yeah, I wanted to ask, um, I noticed that uh, almost all of you only have a very few movies out there. Like, but um, to me as a musician, I know I had like thousands, maybe ten thousand of projects I did, but then again, I only have two songs I like now. Like how many projects did you actually try? Like, did you try before or like did you work your way? Uh, or did you manage to just do this one take, like this one movie, like within uh, your first steps, or like did you try it longer? I don't know if you get me. Like, like if you have more drafts that you didn't publish, yeah. or it was really your first project and you published it. Because you're all like great, you're all very professional, but I wonder for the others like to like to get in that mindset. Uh, I, I actually have like a fair few projects. Um, but uh, I guess like uh, with every new project you get better and you evolve and you grow and you realize things that maybe in your older projects you would have taken out. But I, I think what's nice about a film that once it's finished, it's done and you can put it to the side and move on to the next one and look back and go, okay, yeah, I could have changed that, but I didn't change that. But then in the next version you can and that's, what, that's like how things grow and how things evolve and become better and better hopefully every time. Um, for me, I started off as a dancer, and so I made like conceptual dance videos. Um, so that's basically where I picked up directing from, and so like it was kind of like practice for me to create this one. Yeah. I, yeah, I think for me, I have two. I have few few ideas and projects, and uh, some I put it down, and some I still live in my mind, but uh, I never put it in the trash because I said maybe someday when yeah, I will be growing up or older, maybe, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's um, when it's not finished, it's always in the corner of my mind whenever it's... Mm. It, I also think it's about, uh, you have idea. for me, I have ideas, for example, but uh, I have to choose to stick with them. And that's, it was the first project that I was like, I was, I didn't have a long time. So I was like, yeah, okay, I want to do this. I just want to get it out. So let me just do it. My previous experiences were mostly on stage or other people's short films as actors. But um, for me now that it all started with the quarantine because I didn't know how much I can project from a lens and how, how much I can play with the perception, how many different worlds that I can create. So now I'm starting to have more ideas, but it's still a struggle to choose and to have the motivation to say, yes, this is something that I want to work doing. That's a good one because I do the test. If it hits me three times, then I'll, I'll do it. And um, because you, you want to be enjoying the time staying with it. You don't want to have a drag with finishing something. So that's what I do. And uh, I also decided not to have more than one thing going on. When a second one comes, I have to put it on the side until I, I'm done. And also I have to focus finishing it because I realized or noticed that the creative spirit 
stays with me a certain time and then it kind of leaves a little bit. So I want to be finished by them so I do have the clear eye on it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm free for the next. And I do, I did pretty many very short ones in the last two, three years that way. But uh, then I never left the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, for you as a media creator, uh, are there specific ingredients that you actually have to have in uh, your works to uh, have it considered to be a good one? Or is that, uh, are you consider generally considering um, your stuff as... Uh, Yeah, um, <laughs> help me, help me there. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, okay. no, for, for, block. <laughs> for me, I don't think I can sit down and write an idea. It has to come to me naturally. Like I'll, I'll be on the street, I'll be in an aeroplane, and it'll hit me, and I'll just grab my phone or a pen and paper, and I'll write it down, and then it's it's stuck in the back of my head, and I might not bring that life, that idea to life, but maybe I will six months later, a year later, and because I'm still remembering, I'm still thinking about it. And then once I've brought it to life, like the, the next thing is looking for a character for me, looking for someone that I know that can play that role or, or be, that, be that person. And uh, that, that sort of comes naturally as well. And then if I have those two things, <clears throat> I can put them together and create a film. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> Um, are there specific ingredients that you, as a uh, media creator, have to have in uh, your your films? Can you elaborate on ingredients? Like, uh, like, uh, like ideas uh, or um, views, moods, you name it. Oh, create your film. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah, not really, but pretty much. Uh, I don't really have, I don't like to put myself in a box and say, okay, I'm going to stick to this route and just have these specific ingredients. But I guess in terms of color, you can say that. Um, you know, like I said before, like most of my stuff are usually very colorful. And so I guess that's like the major thing that I would say mm -hmm. is the major ingredient. Uh, for me, it had to be natural too. Um, maybe an idea, sometimes just a thinning. And uh, as a actor and director, mainly an actor, um, it's when I need to explore sometimes feeling or uh, a universe or a character. And um, when I can think about anything else and uh, it stay and stick around and around and again. Um, yeah, I think I, my, my soul and my body is telling me, yeah, you had to do it and I don't have any choice, so I do it. I don't know about any, like, I have to have this, uh, but for now, basically pretty much coincidental. My mom is in everything that I do and she's not very happy about it. She's not, she's having anxiety. She's like, I don't want it. But um, yeah, for now, her can be my most essential. There is, uh, when I look back now for the last two, three years, then I see in all of them some improvised music. So that seems to be one thing it needs for me and uh, but I don't know for how long anymore because I feel that there is a little s swift going on or something change and uh, and another thing they do have is a certain calm mood and there is something in those films you can't really describe I have no actors that's one thing. So the focus is on, on something else, not on people. And that makes the mood pretty much uh, brings it in the foreground. So we have uh, room for one more question uh, from the audience. Anyone raise your hands? Um, 
then I would like to uh, state a personal question, um, like like from from my uh, own um, point of view, and we uh, have like um, four minutes left. So uh, let's say just what comes out of your mind, 30 seconds, shoot, and we are done with it. If, it, if that's okay, and if, it, if you do not consider it rude, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what would you think, uh, what would you think will uh, change in the last 10 years, uh, in the next 10 years in media creation? Uh, uh, better cameras, better gear, easier easier ways to make films. I don't know, everyone is a filmmaker now because they have an iPhone, so the next thing will probably be like something you just strap to your head and you just make the, the film in your mind. Um, for me, I think that the use of people, like the use of actors was gonna change, or I guess people are gonna start you know, using less actors and use um, more like graphics or stuff like that, or technology. Yeah, a little bit of the same thing, I think Maybe we have we will have more mixed arts like uh, dancer, like uh, graphic artist, design, music, and uh, and like dubbing or everything else. And uh, yes, I hope it would be great. Maybe. I also like multidisciplinary stuff. Yesterday, as I was watching your movie, I was really impressed by the colors and the dancers, and then the music, the chanting, everything all at once. I really enjoy it. So I would like to see more of that. And I have no idea what will change in the next 10 years, hopefully me uh, in the media sector. But other than that, don't know. I don't know either, and I really don't care, because I'm not up to. Um, the mainstream anyway. I'm not even interested what's going on there. I like these little, dirty, gritty, self-made, handmade, low-budget, no-budget films. Mm -hmm. And I always did. I mean, even at times when I had budgets or were going after it, I like that you can do what you want to do now nowadays. And I would like to see more of it. Um, thank you all so much for uh, joining us for the uh, last panel session here at the ISFF in Detmold. That goes to um, all of you guys, of course, to the audience here in the room and downstairs in the hall. And we all love you. Uh, we all love you guys so much, especially also those that are on their sofas and tables at home and everyone here uh, that made this possible, the technicians, uh, the guys on, uh, that do the lamps, the cashiers, everyone actually did a real, real, real good job. Thank you so much. <laughs> and should you be at uh, some point uh, in uh, the opportunity to actually apply, try uh, info at culture-art.com. Uh, we would very appreciate having you here and see you all in that mode to the 18th installment of the International Short Film Festival. Thank you all so much.